So your filter's not working in Microsoft Excel. I'm gonna look at a number of reasons why this might be the case. First thing you wanna check out is whether you have blank rows or blank columns in your data. Let me show you what will happen if you do. Now, if I click into this data and apply a filter, so I'm gonna to go to sort, filter, and then filter, you can see I get the drop down menu buttons for these columns, but not to the right of this blank column. So if I applied a filter, say for the York branch, you can see that it applies the filter above the blank row, but not below it. And also to the left of the blank column, but not to the right of it. So I'll just clear that filter. Now in this situation, you've got a couple of options. First thing you definitely want to do is remove the filter. Now you can go up to sort and filter and remove it there. Or if you like a shortcut key, just click somewhere in your data, control shift L will apply a filter and control shift L will then remove the filter. So if you have blank rows and blank columns in your data, one option is to manually select all of the data that you want to include in the filter. So then if I go to sort and filter, filter, you can see that it's included a drop down list in all of the columns now. So if I now filter for York, it applies it to all of the data. But really, Excel doesn't like you having blank rows and blank columns in your data. So you should aim to get rid of them. So if I take the filter off, Control Shift L. So what I can do is right click on this column letter here and delete. And then right click on this row number here and delete. And then all I need to do is select one cell and then Control Shift L. And you can see it applies the drop down list to every column. And if I do that same filter on York, you'll see it now works. Now in this example, I can't see that I've got any blank rows or columns, but if I add a filter, you can see that only goes up to column D. And if I apply the York filter again, because it only seems to filter part of the data. So I'm gonna clear that filter. Now a trick here is to click somewhere in your data and use the key combination Control A, and that selects what's called the current region up to an empty column or row. Now I can't see an empty column or row, but if I look carefully at the row numbers here, I've got a double line between 17 and 19. And where's 18? Well, it's obviously hidden. And also I've got a double line between the D and the F. Where's column E? Well, it's obviously hidden. So to unhide this row, if I select on either side of it and then right click unhide, and I could do the same here. And then I can delete the column and the empty row. And if I do Control Shift L, Control Shift L, it will apply the drop down list to every column and the filter will now work. Okay, now another reason that your filters are not working is where you have merged column headings. So you can see here I've got a merged column heading for the product description. It's merged over two columns where I've got the brand name and then the product. Now, if I go to the drop down list here, you can see that it's only offering the unique values found in the brand column. So I can only filter on brand. I can't actually filter on the product description. That is not made available to me. Now, the way to get around this, if I just clear this filter, is to unmerge the cell. So if I select that cell, home tab on the ribbon, there's my merge button, and I can say unmerge cells. 
and I need to basically put in two separate column headings. And what I'm going to need to do is remove the current filter, so Control Shift L, and then reapply it, Control Shift L. So now I'll have a drop down list for brands, filter for brands, and a filter for description. So for example, I could type in pan and it will give me all the pan products. Another situation you might have is where you have merged cells within your records. So for example, someone here has indicated that both York and Sheffield are within the Northern region, but the region has only been entered once in a merged cell. Now, if we look in this list, we have one, two, three, four, five branches in the Northern region. But if I do a filter on that region, you see I only get four results. If I clear it, now what it actually did is associate this region with York, but not with Sheffield. When you merge cells, the merge value actually belongs in the top left cell in your merged range of cells. So what I would need to do in this example is select that cell and unmerge. And you can see how North is associated with York, but not with Sheffield. So I'd need to type North in there. And then when I apply that filter, I get the five branches. So another problem is where you try and apply a number filter such as top 10, above average or below average. If I go for top 10 and then click on OK, it doesn't work. If I say above average, it doesn't apply a filter at all. Now, if this is happening, it's probably because somewhere within that column you have an error. You can see I've got a value error there. Now, if I look at the formula, it's actually trying to multiply a text value by a number which is why I'm getting that error. Now, obviously that formula should be D35 times E35, which would get rid of the error. So if I now try and apply the top 10 filter, you'll see that it works. Another scenario is where you have inconsistent formatting within a column. You can see in this price column here, I've got currency formatting applied to the 46 pounds here, but not to the 46 pounds in the third record. Now, if I go up to the filter for price and go to number filters, and I say equals to, and I type in 46, click on okay, it doesn't return any results, despite the fact that I've got two records in my data with a price of 46 pounds. If I go back to number filter, equals and I type 46.00 then I get one of the records the one without the currency symbol likewise if I put a currency symbol in front of the 46 I get one record the one record that had 46 pounds with the currency symbol in front of it now if I type 46 pounds directly into this search box, it does return both records. So there is a difference in the way number filters work versus this search box. If I just clear this filter, what I'd recommend is that you always aim at consistent formatting within your column. Then you only have to type in one value for your filter and it will return all relevant records. Now I'll clear that filter. The same would be true, by the way, for dates. You can see here I've got two dates for the 28th of December 2021 typed in with different formats. If I said equals 28th of the 12th, 2021, you can see only returns that one record with the date formatted in that way. If I said equals 28-12-21, dash dash 
it would return the record with the date formatted in that way. So the next problem is where you try and click on these filter buttons and nothing happens. I'm not getting any options for filtering or sorting. Now, one thing you might want to check is whether your sheets are grouped. If you look at the top of Excel here, I've got the file name and then after the file name, the word group. If I look down here at the sheet tabs, I can see that more than one sheet is selected. Now, to get out of this group mode, you can either click on a sheet that isn't grouped or right click on the sheet you're currently working on and choose ungroup sheets. Then when you go to your filter drop downs, you'll see that they then work. Another reason why you may find that your filter buttons are non-responsive is that your sheet is protected. You can tell if a sheet is protected because a lot of the buttons and the ribbon will be grayed out. Now to unprotect the sheet, you need to go to the review tab on your ribbon and look for this button, unprotect sheet. Now if you click on it, it may ask you for a password, which you'll need to obviously know. But once you've unprotected the sheet, you will then find that the filters are then available to you. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.